listeners, and welcome to another edition of The Flow. I am your community manager, Doc Rock, along with my awesome co-host. I'm so enthusiastic. <laughs> I'm Katie. Hello, everyone. <laughs> I know why you're happy. You're happy today because you're getting Lou with with chickens. I am. I am. I'm getting a, a box of chickens being delivered in the mail, which I don't understand how that's a thing. So we'll find out. <laughs> we'll find out pretty soon. <laughs> Oh, my God. As uh, Sandora Clegane would say, I'll take two of those chickens. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What are we talking about today, Kate? Oh, oh you are going to be excited, Doc, and everyone watching. Hold on to your wallets. We are talking about podcasting gear. So all of the tech, all of the equipment that you need to be successful as a podcaster. Full disclaimer before we start this entire conversation. All of this is really, really, really personal and specific to what kind of podcast you're creating, what your budget is, what your goals are, all of this kind of stuff. So Doc will give you all of his best recommendations and things that he uses to power, but that does not mean that you need to come at him or <laughs> come at us saying that it's too expensive or it's not what you want. So like, we're big believers in, what is your statement, Doc? It's buy it, buy it right or buy it twice. Is that what everyone says? <laughs> Buy it right or buy it twice. And nowadays, yeah. it's even more like buy it right and buy it thrice. Before, everything used to be in a, this is the bomb and this is pretending. But they built a lot of stuff in the middle now. Yeah. And a lot of times, even with the middle stuff, it sounds great on paper, but then you outgrow it. So then you have to buy it again. So especially on the larger devices like the Roadcaster Pro or the Roadcaster Duo, it's better to make that decision right away and to change somewhere else. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, if I was doing a video podcast right now, nutshell, I would use the phone, skip the camera, and buy an efficient interface like the Pro, the Duo, maybe even the Streamer X, which is kind of stretching it because it's it's a baby. It's missing some stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's a really good question. It also, again, it's like really dependent on what your size, uh, you know, of your space is, whether or not you're mobile or not. I don't, I don't mean mobile like your phone. I mean, like, are you on the go? Are you going to be, you know, recording video or recording your podcast while you're out and about in different places? <laughs> are you going to be running back and forth between different studio spaces and home and office spaces? All of that factors into like the kind of equipment that you need to have. So maybe we should start by talking about like, since you mentioned, I think a really important part, the order of priority, right? So like none of us are entirely made of money, short of maybe like Bezos or, or any of his peeps. But in general, most of us are not made of money. So what if you need to update something, what do you like? What's the first thing to start with? What's the most important thing? It's a podcast. So microphone slash interface, whatever your audio train, that's what that is. Uh, I just, I used the wrong word. That wasn't what I, I meant to be audio train, but uh, whatever your audio flow, we'll run with that. Yeah. We'll run with your audio flow. Whatever your audio flow is, that should be in this particular situation, that should be the most pristine of everything you got going down. Yeah. And so nowadays, luckily there's cool stuff like the new pod mic that is out. So there's only one fit. And this will cover your entire audio train and make you sound almost as beautiful as I. What's missing from an SM7B on a, on a pod mic? Not a lot if you don't have a big booming voice, right? If you're born with this, this is going to be better, right? <laughs> but if you're more like Katie, Eden, not even Paul. Me, Paul got to stay over here, <laughs> right? <laughs> like Aubrey, most of the people in our chat, except for the handful of us that are just barrel chested, you know, deep voice. Um, this is amazing. And what Katie is using also, same thing. Primary difference, this is like 150. The Katie's mic is like 250. That's a good start and a good finish. And you can run your whole show and never upgrade these. These will be absolutely fine. Yeah. So if you're listening, Doc is mentioning the Rode pod mic. And then Doc and I both rock fairly often on the Shure microphones. Mine is an MV7. And Doc currently, he's, he's got all of them. <laughs> But currently, he's on the yeah. SM7B. The difference between the MV7 and the SM7B, other than price, is that the MV7 allows you to plug a microphone in with both USB as well as XLR. So I like am never giving up this microphone because for me, it's really easy for me to bring it back and forth between spaces. So we have two of them, probably thinking about getting a couple more, to be honest. But 
I bring this one back and forth Pro between. Pro tip, there'll be leftovers after camp. So <laughs> exactly. just um, sneak one into the bag real quick. Exactly. But I, <laughs> currently I bring this one back or one of these back and forth between my home studio setup and the office studio setup. When I'm at home, I just plug it directly into my MacBook by USB and it sounds incredible. Here when I'm in the office, I'm using the Shure MV7 into the Rodecaster Pro with an XLR cable. So, And it's a pretty orange XLR cable that Doc got us. I don't know if you can see it on camera. <laughs> For people who need that quick, I don't really have, I don't know much about setting this stuff up. I'm, trying, I'm not trying to make it like absolutely flawless. The MV7 and the PodMic USB are both dope. Mm -hmm. So this is actually, the PodMic that I have is the updated PodMic. This is the brand new one. Mm -hmm. This is the PodMic USB. I have two brand new in the box regular pod mics <laughs> behind me because I bought backups. When I bought my original pod mic, this is how crazy and how important audio is. I bought that before I got the SM7B and it was so good and so important to me that I actually bought two backups because at the time you can get it for 99 bucks mm. and they were really hard to get. So I was like, hey, I'm going to buy three because also this, you know, thing, this panini is only going to last a couple of weeks. So I have, you know, in-studio guests and we'll all be on the same mic. Yeah. Because at that time of my podcast, I was bringing in other local contemporaries to do conversations about things that are popping, you know, with them growing their businesses. And then that thing kept going and then became two weeks. That's when I first got mine. And then it was like, OK, here's two months. All right, cool. Okay, here's two years. All right, we're still doing it. <laughs> so <laughs> I have brand new in the box. I never opened because I never turned my podcast into the Epic Panini podcast. Yeah. Because we weren't allowed to be next to each other. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. And we've said this a bunch of times on a bunch of shows, and people always fight us on this. But these microphones are meant to be close to your mouth. <laughs> you want, when we're doing trainings now, like now that I'm a professional, I have sometimes a group of middle school kids or teenagers that come here through as part of a program that we run with the local schools. And they come in and learn more about video production and coding and a bunch of things that happen here in the ECAM and code and circuit spaces. But we tell them like, keep it no more than a fist away from your microphone. Okay. And you know, and it's, it's funny because no one seems to think that way when they're getting into podcasting and many people want to keep the microphone off camera. And if you're one of the people that wants to keep the microphone off camera, by all means, but you're going to need a different kind of microphone in order to pull that off. So you really need to think about that because it's not like, it's not as easy as like moving the one you bought off screen. So like it really, it does matter. No, Tatiana, it's not. No, I'm just picking on her. She's not even here to defend herself. <laughs> Listen, if you want to do that, great. Here's the thing. The one or two microphones that sound really excellent at a distance start at $1,000. So the Sennheiser 415, whatever, I mean, like you're looking at $1,000 to get it that far away. All right. So here's a good one. This is not too bad. This one roughly around, uh, I think, three to 400 bucks. This is a Deity S Mic 2. It comes in a James Bond case. <laughs> but it looks something like this. So this was Katie's meaning, like using a shotgun mic. Yep. This one won't go as far as the Sennheiser. So I might be able to get it about right there, which is roughly like if I throw a shotgun like this, that's about how far away at an inch or two I can get it out of my shot. But that's because this is in the box. If I was full screen, you would see this. So by the time you get yeah. this all the way out the way. Zoom really, really in and see what you can do. It, it's at the edge of your existence, right? Which is why people, if you've ever watched the show where they show the blooper reels, the person in the corner with the stick, with the headphones and, you know, a microphone like oh, this yeah. or the Sennheiser MV55 or the other Sennheiser I just spoke about, it's like literally bopping the person in the head and they move it just out of the headshot. Yeah. That's how close it really is. Yeah. And a lot of people don't really get that but if you want a good shoddy they're not cheap and what people are using for their shoddies are fantastic shotgun mics but they're thinking about like using their road video mic which is a hundred bucks and it ain't it ain't the same it's different it's a great mic for what it's for it ain't for this and again the thing the really important thing to remember is it's a podcast so even if it's a video podcast the sound really 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 matters and should always be more important to you than 
what the shot looks like. You can make adjustments on the shot and you can work around having a mic on camera or off camera if you can afford it. But it really, how you sound is what matters more than how the shot looks. So keep it in mind as you're going forward. I just, I just want to remind everybody, this is 400 bucks. That's not expensive. That's not even close in microphones. I know it's expensive to you, but all things are relative. From a microphone standpoint, it's actually cheap. <laughs> Yeah. I have a microphone right next to my leg that's like three grand and we sold it, but I had a $15,000 microphone. <laughs> so like, trust me, 400 is pretty much a beginner's mic mm-hmm. to the audio space, right? But I use those in film production. And so when we were using it for something like that, trust me, I was building the crap out of the clients for that. <laughs> but I wanted to say the thing that will help you decide, like, do I really need to buy something that crazy? I, just like Anna, very handsy, but I tend to be handsy by touching my mic. You don't hear this at all. None whatsoever. Even if I grab it like James Brown, (laughs) you don't hear none of that, right? If Katie touches her mic hard enough, you'll hear it. Yeah, there you go. When my people would tell you when I'm on my, on my, my uh, show and I'm getting like hyped up and I'm about to tell them something dope. I'm just like, listen, folks, (laughs) right? And you can hear that presence difference. That's because I'm closing the air cavity around my mic. That is my wake you up moment. That is my version of putting some weird animation on the screen, which uses up all your computer resources and makes your stream horrible. Instead, what I do is go, listen, folks, this is about to be important. (laughs) So I also want a mic that's very dampened for sound. Now, you'll see podcasts with two people sitting in the chair. I think George or one of our guys has been asking us, what is that amazing arm that they're using? Oh, yeah. Because these guys never, they never touch the mic. Uh, it's a Gator Frameworks. It's a, it's a relatively expensive arm, but they're designed to look pretty as you sit in two chairs and have, you know, basically live therapy. So those things available too. So all of the microphones that I have both at home and here in the studio are on these little like Manfrotto stands. So they're just like tiny stands and I can move them around. I don't really have like a, a place to easily attach an arm in any of these spaces, but I know lots of people do. They either want like some kind of arm to be able to swing things in and off shot, or if they you know, if they have like a busy desk and they want to be able to push it out of the way when they're not recording, how do you approach finding a good quality arm? I guess what, what are the main brands that matter? This answer is going to be so stupid. (laughs) (laughs) How I approach it is I buy it from a place that I can send it back because unfortunately they all look fantastic on paper, but you have to try them in your space the way that you do. I started with the Rode PSA-1 from like 15 years ago. I still have it. It's a fantastic one. But they've gotten better since then. Prior to the PSA-1, anything of merit would have been about four or 500 bucks. Mm-hmm. PSA-1 was the first affordable one that's out there. Now, what I would definitely tell you to avoid because I bought them or they've come free with some sweetening the deal kit is these like $30, $40 arms. If you only can afford a $30 or $40 arm, I'm going to say skip the arm and get a stand like this. This is a uh, Amazon Basics mic stand, two pack for $19. This will be better than an arm that makes a lot of noise. Or while you're talking, your microphone is slowly dripping away from your face. Yeah, I can imagine that there'd be absolutely nothing worse than spending like, you know, 30, 40 bucks on an arm and then it drops your $400 microphone or your Mm -hmm. like $1,000 microphone. Not cool. So yeah, you don't want to cheap out. I mean, you want to find something that works, but yeah, really good point. If you do need to get something a little bit cheaper to make it work, having just one of these Manfrotto stands or as Doc said, the Amazon Basics microphone stand is a really great solution that at least keeps it safe, right? Like you want to be really thinking about that as well as functionality, it's safety and keeping your products in the best possible condition. Katie is using a like $20 Manfrotto stand. And what's really incredible about that stand is you're like, well, my mic doesn't fit on that. No, it does not. However, you can get a <laughs> spigot for the stand. It's a little adapter. Yeah. I'm holding an adapter in my hand with a quarter 20 thread on the bottom quarter 20 thread on the top. Yep. But actually, in this case, it'll be a 5 8 hole on the bottom, quarter 20 thread on top. And it's a $7 adapter. That will allow you to basically use any tripod stand as a mic stand. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So it'll have the tiny little quarter 20 hole on the bottom and then the big size 5 8 hole on the top. You just screw it on top. And you probably have a little tripod somewhere that came with an action camera. Yep. 
or, you know, came with something that you have. So if you have something small like that, by all means, use it. Believe it or not, if you happen to have a, a metal person that you know, like, like luckily I do, this stand for the pie mic is a little bit too tall. I could just take it to him and have him chop like an inch off <laughs> and then re-thread the bottom. So if you have a hacksaw, you can do it yourself. It's not that hard. <laughs> the hard part is re-putting the treads back on. Yeah. So tap and die kits aren't very expensive. You can buy them at Home Depot. They're just a pain in the butt to get started. But once you get it started, you can remake the treads. So there's a lot of resources. And go to the music store near you. They always have a used gear selection. Always. Every single music store I can think of has a used gear selection. And that's a good place because they will let you test things out. A lot of places will let you rent microphones. So, yeah, just don't buy something crazy unless you know you can return it. That's really, really good advice. All right, I'm going to put you on the spot because we've been talking a lot about this here in this space. What are things that you can do to help with soundproofing in your space? So, you know, none of us are probably going to get to a, a place where we have actual studio quality soundproofing because that just doesn't make sense from, you know, most of our homes and office spaces. But how can you make it so that you have less of that reverb or less of that bounce back that's coming off all these windows and walls? Okay, so... There is the corner traps. All right, so it's hard to explain this in, in quick terms, but I will. And, I'm, and it's hard to do it without making it nerdy. <laughs> As you talk, everybody knows about the slap back because they've heard me about it constantly. The slap back also is if I'm near a wall, especially near a window, and I say, hey, really loud, the hey bounces right back at me, mm -hmm. right? And that's the hard reflections off the wall. Because sounds are waves. They actually move through the air. And that's why every icon of a speaker or a sound has the three little increasing parentheses. Mm -hmm. It's a wave. It's a wave. Right? <laughs> so when, when a wave hits something solid, it comes back. Yep. So as you're talking in a room, especially with multiple people, the bass sounds, because they're lower frequency, they take longer to disappear. So they start to gather in your room and you get a low rumble. If you've ever been to a restaurant that has been built in a converted warehouse or they just have that hard metal ceiling with no kind of treatment, the reason why we all have white panels in our office with the tic-tac-toe and all of the little two-by-fours mm -hmm. um, in the ceiling is that's designed to not let that bass just rumble around your office. So when you've been in those places, it sounds horrible. And it's like, I love this coffee shop but I can't work here. And that's because they have giant glass windows and metal ceilings and it sounds bad. So like wherever Caleb was yesterday while we were talking, yeah. that's the sound. Yeah, coffee shop. <laughs> right? That's, <we're, laughs> yeah. that's, right, that's that sound. So that's when the sound is just moving around too much and it's not dying anywhere. Mm -hmm. So when you see acoustic offices, including the cubicles that we all make for, like, yeah, um, I'm gonna need you to have those um, TPS reports uh, done by today. <laughs> The reason why we had those panels was to break that up because you could not function in the office without those. It's not just so you don't see each other or so you have a place to pin pictures of your chickens. That was designed to break that audio drone up. So a couple things you can do. Towels on your desk right by your microphone out of the shot will break some of that up. So now the wave is already soft before it hits a wall. Yeah. Behind your monitors. If you have a wall, like I can almost reach the wall. My, it's about six inches out of my fingers. You can put some thing there that will help soften the blow. A curtain. But there's no window, Doc. I don't give a shit. Put the curtain anyway. But just put the curtain and the rod. Make it look like it's a window. That curtain behind you on the wall, like a fake window, a window, will also break that up. Uh, thicker blackout curtains will help break some of that up so you're not hitting the glass because the glass also will rumble and then add it back. So the problem in the office where you sat right now, mm -hmm. ceiling, metal, check. <laughs> there's wood, but there's a metal round dookie right there mm -hmm. above you. Every right? possible window. And one, <laughs> one, two, three, four, of like 10 solid glass windows yep. and windows in the cavity so that the sound can get stuck in the cavity and bounce around in the cavity before it decides to come back to you. Yep. So dropping the blinds would really help. It's just hard to remember to drop 10 sets of blinds every time you record. Yeah. So we got to get Katie the Hunter Douglas joints where she can like sit down the podcast and press the button. and <laughs> It just automates. When I sit down, it does. <laughs> it just goes down. 
It's good to keep in mind that I love I love the like towel idea that like there are things that you can do that are not spend thousands of dollars and completely overhaul your entire space. Oh, 100%. There are things that you can do that will make a difference and it isn't as big a project as it may seem. So it's dumb that I don't have towels here in the office because buying a set of just like cheapy towels would go a really long way to just even having some backup options while I'm here. And it does. I like I notice a big difference when I'm recording at home versus when I'm recording here. That space is a smaller space. It only has one window. It's like it's got like books. Yeah. Tons of like books. Yeah, books and wood walls and like things like that. Those books are great for absorbing the sound. That's why libraries sound good. <laughs> the books are really good because they're hard and soft, yeah. right? The hard, thick pink foam, mm -hmm. they come in various thicknesses. This is what you use as rigid insulation. And yes, it has the panther all over it and a bunch of writing and that looks dumb, but you can cover that with spray glue and a piece of paper mm -hmm. or spray glue and some fabric and just hang them on the walls. And those alone will do better than most of what you got. But if you can get to a Michaels and get some foam, you could do it. The acoustic foams are dope. But now that everybody wants to be a podcaster, they've become a little expensive, mm -hmm. if you will. So if you want something cheaper, those work. And my favorite is felt right tiles because they look pretty and they're made out of felt. But this felt is made out of recycled polycarbonate bottles, a.k.a. water bottles. So you're protecting the planet and you can build cute designs and mm -hmm. It's been a favorite of mine and on my list of stuff to buy for this office forever. I just ain't did it yet. I don't know why. I passed it on to Ken. His <laughs> hilariously, even though we've been talking about it for a while, uh, Ken's wife was like, you should just get these felt right tiles. <laughs> I was like, yep, that, that sounds, yeah, they're that they're sounds really correct. good. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I built my design and everything. It just looked really <laughs> good. One of our cats, Vicky, is building his studio now. Mm -hmm. And so he still has it as sticks, you know, like popsicle sticks yeah. with just a framing. And then so he's like, yeah, I'm going to fill this up with the foam to silence it. So this room will be dead, but the other room won't be. So if you happen to be doing like he's doing and building a purpose built studio, yeah. don't forget the pink stuff. Oh, OK. So we have microphones, check, mixers we briefly talked about, soundproofing. Is lighting the next thing? I know it's not cameras. So what comes next? Lighting? Lighting would be next. Here's some of my favorite lights right now. Of course, we all know I love my Nan lights. It, well, there's two sides to your lighting, right? There's your key light, which I have right here in front of me. Mm -hmm. And then you have your fill light, which I have right here to the left of me. Mm -hmm. And then you have your hair light, which is behind me. That one's low and slow, not that big a deal. Um, but it's just enough to help create some separation between the background. Uh, right now, we don't have a hair light on you. Yeah, I was, was going to say. We use a lot of practicals in the background to separate you. Yeah. Your setup will look even doper once we add a hair light. We mm -hmm. just haven't done it yet. After that, everything is practicals. That means all the little glowy things going on behind you that just <laughs> add a little bit of element and help you see that it's not a backdrop and that there's some depth. Yeah. So my favorite key lights right now has been a 100-watt cob light. Right. So cob light means circuit on board. That's where you see the little yellow circle. So we're talking like the GL 100, the Nanlite 100 or the Amran 100 or like they're all relatively the same. My favorite brand is Nanlite and Cobor. Nanlite, if you want to spend a little more and know you're going to rock that baby for a hot minute. Cobor, if you want a really well built, cheaper option, they're a relatively new company and we've had a chance to meet them at NAB. It's a small group of women that are like trying to stir up the pot. Awesome. And they're amazing. Their lights are amazing. Nanlite, and you might not know this, also CEO woman. <laughs> and she's like, yo, my husband's an artist and he was doing his thing and he was also working a lot in film. He was just complaining about all the light options out there. So I went and solved the problem. And I'm like, damn, did you solve it good? <laughs> like, I don't think many people in the industry know it, but uh, yeah, Nanlite, also CEO woman and she got it done. She solved the problem. So I would say take the two women companies, uh, Colbor, C-O-L-B-O-R, or Nanlite, and find what you need. Absolutely. All right. Well, that brings us, I guess, back to camera. Anything else I'm missing in between? Uh, the only thing I want to bring up, and I know this makes people sad, <laughs> but those little flat panel cuties on the end of your desk, they're good starter lights, but they're not very good in the long run. Yeah. In most cases, you look blown out. You might not think you look blown out. I can always tell when they're there. <laughs> Pretty much, I can always tell when they're there. 
and no ring lights. Please do not spend a dime on ring lights. If you have them already, use them until they explode. If you don't have them already, <laughs> please do not spend a single five cents on those things at all. Awesome. And one thing that I, we, and we've talked a lot about this on a bunch of other shows, but we can repost a separate video or, or send a link in the show notes for other people. But one thing that Doc does that I think is really, really helpful, so much so that I've been forcing him to put them together for basically everyone that I know. But Doc always has like what we are now calling it like a streamer emergency kit or a podcaster emergency kit. This is like a really small box. He's probably got one sitting right there. Mine's out of reach. But it has like all the little things, right? So like, there, you know, we talked about the big things that exist in your studio. But whether you're traveling or not, you know, or you're sharing a space or not, having like, you know, extra spigots, little extra, you know, USB-C to USB-A plugs, like Allen keys and tools. It, it's got levels. Piece of gaff tape stuck to the bottom. Yeah, it's got, <laughs> it's got gaff tape stuck to the bottom. But having like something like that, it really does go a long way. So even if you're not at the point yet where you can afford a full great quality backup microphone or like a full backup light, backup camera, like all these different things, have something like this where you're like, oh, shoot, that cable just died or, you know, oh, no, like I think my camera is not quite level. Like having these extra things in one contained spot that you can easily throw into a bag if you need to take it with you, but it's always there in the same spot if it's here in your studio space. It really does go a long way. And it's something I think we always forget about when we're talking about gear is there's all of the little things and they really matter. Like the cables really, really matter. You know, all of the things to connect stuff where you bought, you know, like I did, where you bought these little awesome stands and then you realize that the microphone doesn't attach to it. Like all of the little things go a long way and having some backups for that is really smart. So I would say that is almost more important than camera really in my mind. Not that camera is not important. It's just there's so many different camera options out there and almost all of them, you can get the quality looking as good as you would need for a video podcast. It's really just a matter of like preference and budget at a certain point on like how intensely awesome do you want it to look. But yeah, if you're well lit and you sound great and you have all of the kind of contingency plans and backups, I think any camera you choose, you will be successful with. Anybody who has bought like hard drives or something, a lot of things ship Mm. with these additional adapters and then we just throw them away. You know what I'm saying? I don't need that, right? So you yeah. just toss it. So instead of tossing it, get yourself a Plano 3560 or a Plano 3600. That's the little box that I have. You can literally get these things at Michael's or at like any craft supply store is going to have them. Amazon's going to have yeah. them. Like it's just a little plastic box with, con with little storage cubbies in it. That's all, that's all you're looking for. You know, I cannot help but buy the <laughs> one that will last 100 years. True, true. So the plain old ones are more expensive, but yeah. yes, you can buy them at Michael's or the Wall World or, you know, Target or whatever. Yep. And when you get these little adapters that come with a hard drive or something, throw it in. Yep. But these come in a two-pack for like $8. This is a USB A to C adapter so that things fit into your MacBook Pros or your M1s. Yeah. And I literally, because they're like $3, $4 a piece, I buy 10 of them. And I'm on my like fourth batch of 10 because every time somebody comes in need one, I just give it to them. I, like, I don't even bother <laughs> thinking about it. But to people, now they have it, it's like, oh, I've been carrying the same one around for like a year since you gave it to me. And I'm like, yeah, because it's super useful. It's Anybody super that has useful. a MacBook, you need at least four of these. If you have four holes on your MacBook, you need four of these. So it's going to set you back 16 bones on Amazon, but buy them. Yeah. You don't have to buy the metal ones. That's just me. You don't have to get red ones. Hello, Glory, Glory, Man United. I buy red ones. Mm -hmm. And I buy gray ones for the opposite direction. Yeah. So I can see without thinking which is which, right? So when I see the gray one, I know that it's a USB-C as the, the hole and then the USB-A as the male. It's super, super simple. Just get your little toolbox cubby. Older uh, moms, you have fruitcake tin. <laughs> <laughs> if you're like my mom, they're full of fruitcake tins. Like, hey, hey, my mom's Korean, and in every Asian mom household, there's a fruitcake tin with every Taco Bell sauce and McDonald's sauce and Jack in the Box sauce. Yeah, put it in one spot with what you need. Shameless plug, but the Ecamm merch site right now, if you're listening to this in the month of July, the Ecamm merch site, which is merch.ecamm.com. We have this amazing cable travel bag that's like really cute, not overly expensive. Yes. And it's like great for your studio, but again, like also awesome just for life. 
Like I'm about to travel out of country in the next couple of weeks. So it's like, I already have that ready to go with like my headphones I want for the plane, like duck showing it off. It's the, it is the greatest thing that you like forget you own if you're me. And then you're like, yes, this makes it so easy. <laughs> Having just everything devoted to like one particular thing in one spot just makes it really easy, right? Like Doc's got all of his cables, everything This ready is to my go. road kit. Yeah. Actually, I'll show you. This is my road kit. Not road as in a microphone company, but road <laughs> as in be ready for the road. So I have a portable USB thingy. That's not a thingy. It's called the dock, right? I have a portable <laughs> dock, a regular dock and a portable dock. Yeah. And remember I was talking about those USB A yeah. to C's? Yep. I have them on dangles or dongles. Yep. For people watching at home, these are roughly about six inches long. The reason why these are great is sometimes the things you want to plug in are too fat and yep. they won't fit. Yep. Cam link looking at you. So <laughs> these are basically like six inch cables with a USB A hole on one side and a USB C thing on the other. Yep. But these are additional cables that came with hard drives, so you don't have to buy them. This particular one is a Thunderbolt because it's slightly faster. And then, of course, for the road, not sponsored. That's really funny to mix these two words in the same sentence. Uh, Shore 215s, <laughs> aka Shore headset, yeah, with a adapter because you might have to use a large segment. Yeah, I have a quarter size battery. This is a 2032. There's also a 2023 in there as well. Yeah, I have camera lens wipes mm -hmm. and a memory stick converter to stick inside here in case I need to copy something from one of the small cameras. So that's all inside the short pouch so they don't move around. And then I have every Apple dongle known to man. <laughs> <laughs> so this allows you to connect the camera to an iPhone. This allows you to connect the camera to an iPad because a lot of times you want to use a mic. Say I have the mic you have, right? Yep. The MV7. Yep. I want to use it on the iPad. I use this adapter. Yep. I want to use it on the phone. I use this adapter. I have basically really tiny iPhone cables. I have a headphone extension, mm -hmm. right? Because you might need to be longer than the headphones that you have. And then I have a USB to lightning adapter that moves power as well, because some USB devices won't have enough power. Standard iPad charging cable and another headphone extension that happens to be a splitter. And then you have cleanliness wipes, alcohol wipes for cleaning your hands. And you never want to do an interview with Stink Mouth, so I got a toothbrush in there. I love that you have a toothbrush. I'm going to a toothbrush into mine. Yeah, no, I'm it's... very about the not Stink Mouth. Now, one last thing. My ink pen, I don't want to pull it out because it's a punk, uh, pain in the butt to get it in. My ink pen is wrapped with about six feet of gaffer's tape because we're going to be out there one day and somebody's going to be like, hey, man, you got any gaffer's tape? And uh... I'll be like, <laughs> why, yes, I do. And they're like, how do you have everything? Uh, because I was in the army and I don't like to die. So you got to be prepared. Genius. <laughs> genius. Again, one more time for the people in the back. Some of these things Doc bought. Some of these things are the, all of the things that come with all the other stuff that you bought. Like, and you, if you're, if you're, <laughs> yes. if you're like me and guilty and like need to get organized, finally, this is my month to get organized, everyone. But it's sitting like in a pile by your computer or it's like up in your office and you're like, I literally have like a box of it. And it's so stupid. Because it should be in like a place where it is, you know, labeled or with other stuff so that you can grab it and go if you need it or so that it's in the right place for the right time. Like it's not doing me any good at home when all of the gear that it works with is here in the office. It's just important to remember these kinds of things and great to add on and great to pay it forward. Yeah, extra power banks, all of like all the different stuff, right? That was my SSD. I forgot to show oh, that SSD. I have a backup Got SSD. It. Yeah that I just leave in there because at some point we're going to get somewhere and someone's like, hey, can you move this uh, presentation to this particular computer? And so I have an SSD and a flash stick in there. Yep. I also have a couple of Motrin <laughs> because um, I travel with Mike sometimes. <laughs> don't, don't tell Mike we said that. <laughs> oh my uh, yeah. gosh. So, so yeah, like it, it's a nice little bag. It's available on the Ecamm merch store. Yep. And I find it handy because it's better than stuffing it all in a bag where everything flies. Yeah. It's harder for me to take that Mendel inventory. But the, the reason why I love this is when I get in the plane, I pull it out of my backpack and I stick it in the back of the seat. Yep. Take everything else out of the way. Everything I need is in there. Mm -hmm. So if I want to charge my phone or look at my iPad on the plane or do whatever, it's all in there. The only thing that's not in there right now is a small little charger that I use for yeah. the iPhone and the iPad yeah. that I'm currently using because I'm charging up for a trip tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so everything is in that bag that's in that bag. 
and she oh, got. I love it. We did it. We, we were we were trying to end 15 minutes early, and I think we've covered just we about it. everything. I'm sorry for all of you camera files out there. Maybe we can do a specific camera one um, at some point. But I think really in the podcasting space, we covered everything that you really need to know and hopefully reminded you of the level of importance of some of these things. Because, you know, again, we all have limited budgets and we all have things that are important to us that may be less important to other people. But what should be important to all of you if you're getting into the podcasting space is audio and for it to sound as good as possible. So if you're going to spend anything, <laughs> start with a great mic and the, you know, the best possible mixer or software for using USB to make it sound as good as possible and then soundproofing and then everything else after that. But the, you know, those are the most important things to be thinking through and considering and thinking again, like about if you're traveling, if you're doing interviews and you're on the go, it's, you don't have a live stream podcast, you're not in one space, you want something that's probably more portable. You want maybe like the MV88 plus or something that works a little bit better for what your situation is. It's, it's really important to think through what you want to do before you go ahead and spend that money. And like Doc said, test some out, go and rent microphones or yeah. borrow one from a friend. If you have a friend who's in the same space that's in the area, go and test it out and practice. Yeah. Or buy them and return them if they have a policy to do that. Cause it does matter. And there's nothing worse than spending a bunch of money and having it sit in a box or not be actually the product that you need it to be. It's harder to sell than it is to buy my friends. So look, like Katie said too, look at all the things that came with various accessories. Like if you bought a camera, it came with an extra cable and some adapters. You bought a hard drive, it came with some adapters. You have enough of these adapters laying around and people keep buying more. And next thing you know, you got 50 of them. So give them yeah, away, get down to 10. <laughs> do a little yeah. soul searching in your junk cable <laughs> drawer. And then any older cables that you don't need, like throw them out. Like I kept keeping them because I might need them one day. And I ended up with a giant, you know, the yellow and black bin. Mm -hmm. Like I literally just threw away three of them full of extra cables and crap. So get rid of that stuff. Anybody who's in the Discord, I can do like a quick 15 minutes, hang out in the Discord, and then I have to get ready for the two streams, my stream and the Ken and Glenn stream. <laughs> so uh, yeah, if you guys want to pop over to Discord, if you have any quick questions, and I'm going to ask you guys to do me a favor. Katie needs a co-host next week, so I'm depending on you guys. Don't be scared. Please send in your questions so that she can put together an episode minus me. I'm yeah. going to be sitting in the second row of mm -hmm. Manchester United behind the goal. <laughs> so I'm out like, shout, see you people. I'm out. I'm not here. So yeah, please make sure, like get your questions in. Uh, next week will be important. Like yeah. you will be part of the show. Yeah. Um, I think you should drag Paul out. I, uh, yeah, no, hey, if you want to be a co-host, you can definitely drop me an email at, I guess, I mean, flow at ecam.com, marketing at ecam.com, katie at ecam any of those will get to me. So send me an email, let me know. And if you have any ideas for what you want us to discuss, I'm open for that as well. So yeah. I think everybody has so many questions and there are a lot of people are hiding and being afraid to ask these questions. And so if you were afraid to ask your yeah. question, Doc's out of the house. I'm, I'm the, the I'm gonna be <laughs> God. I'm gonna yeah. be God. So Perfect time to slide in. And I, I don't know, Eden, call up Katie and like come and talk about why you can use your, your phone as a camera next week. Yeah. You can. Mm -hmm. You absolutely can. As a matter of fact, I'm going to be in a hotel using my phone. You can find more about the flow at flow.ecam.com. This is how you can subscribe to the show. And it's basically available wherever your podcast getting is got. Once again, that's flow.ecam.com. And as always, this show is brought to you by Descript. Yay, Descript! This is a tool that we love and we adore and we couldn't do the show without it. So make sure you go to Descript.com and check it out. This will make your podcast editing so much easier. Thank you for representing the show, Descript. All right, I we're out of here. I love it. <laughs> I appreciate you guys. You guys are amazing. Thank you we'll so much. We'll see you much. next week. Aloha. Glory, glory, Man United. Hi, everyone. Flow Riders, out! Out!